What's up everybody? This is Christopher Carrington with GMUstudent.com and today we're going to be learning about this thing called prepared statements. But if we look at what we did in the previous tutorial like we always do, what I ended up doing, um, I tweaked it a little bit from the way, from where we stopped, but I tweaked my query a little bit just to show you guys a different example in this tutorial. But right now I have select ID and name from the books table. So now, instead of doing select star, I'm only selecting two particular columns, and then in my result set in my loop, I'm getting the column for ID, I'm getting the column for name each time through the loop, and then I'm printing it out. So if you print this out to the console, you will see the ID of all the Harry Potter books, and you will see the names of all the Harry Potter books. So this was just a way to show you that you didn't particularly need to do like a select star. It can really be whatever kind of statement you want. And this will still work if you do a select star because within here, you're only really asking for the ID and the name. So this isn't optimized very well because it's going to end up giving you the result for all those other things and you're not going to take them, but this would still work. So if we ran it, since we still get the parameters for the ID and for the name, we can still print this out. Okay, But if we only selected select ID, and then we asked for the name down here, we would get an error. And it would say the column isn't found. So the column name that we wanted was not found because we did not select it. So this was a quick review of what we did in the previous tutorial just to make sure that you completely understand what we went through. So now in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make our, um, make our programs a little quicker with a thing called prepared statements. So in order to understand prepared statements, I obviously made a little diagram for you guys because if you haven't learned, I like to do that. And what this diagram is going to show you is the difference between regular insert statements and a prepared statement. And basically the reason why we use prepared statements before I go through these little slides is because if you want to use a prepared statement, it will basically in a nutshell make your database work faster because it will allow it to cache statements that you do multiple times. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about statements that we know we are going to do multiple times. So if we know we're going to be inserting a lot of books into a, into a database, it's probably a statement we're going to do multiple times. So that's when we would use a prepared statement. Okay, so now you understand the general reason of why we would use it if we want to do something multiple times and we want the database to cache those statements, but let's see how it actually works. So before in our insert tutorial, we learned how to insert items into a database. So I have two examples right here. And if you remember the um, standard MySQL or SQL syntax was insert into and then the name of the um, table that you wanted to insert into and then the two column names. So this is what we did. And then values, so the values you want to put in, and then the first value, which will point to name, and the second value, which will point to author. So this is standard what we did before. But then let's say later in the program, we called the program again, and we wanted to insert two more names, or two more books into the database. We would have to write another statement that would look like insert name and author, and then the values escape with jazz and Donna Singer. So every single time, even though this is still a, an insert statement and you're still putting in things into the name column and the author column, when SQL reads this statement and then sends it to MySQL, the database, it will see these two statements as different statements. Why? Because the values are different. And because the values are different, it will not cache this data. So it will do this statement as a whole new statement, and it will do this statement as a whole new statement. It kind of stinks. So here's another example. Example of a select statement. So let's say at one point in our program, we wanted to select star from books where ID is 8, and then select star from books where ID is 9. At first glance, maybe before we did this tutorial, you would have said, oh yeah, these statements are pretty similar. The database might cache these two statements, but it wouldn't, because what is actually in the statement is different. And because it's different, it will treat this as a whole new statement, and this is a whole new statement. So you're effectively not letting your database go basically to its full potential because it has the potential to cache statements, but you're not allowing it to. So if you go ahead and you insert 100 books into this database this way, every single insert will take the same amount of time. It won't cache. But if you do it a prepared statement way, which is going to be in this slide, you will start to cache. Let's see how that's done. 
Here is an example of a prepared statement. And what it will do is it looks kind of like the insert books and it said insert into books and you still put the columns that you want to do it in. But wherever the insert statement is going to slightly tweak each time is where you will put these question marks. So that when SQL reads this statement again, it will see it as the exact same time that it read it the other time. So what does it do? It caches the statement. So now you have effectively started to cache your insert statements so that every single time you do an insert, it will cache it and then it will go way, way faster. If you think databases already work fast, you're going to see them work a lot faster. So this is why you'll put this little question mark here and that will effectively let your database cache this information. And then it's the same thing with the select star. You would say select star from books where ID is assigned and the question mark. So I know what you're probably thinking right now. Well, how do I get the information that I want to be in the question mark, right? So, I mean, here we were able to put the actual values we wanted to put in here. But here, we only put a question mark. Well, after that question mark, you would write a couple statements that would say, in the first question mark, put the name in here, whatever that string is, and then in the second question mark, put this in here. So it's a little bit more code instead of just writing this one statement, but you're going to have to write two more lines of code, which will plop the things in the question marks, but it will still make your database run faster because it will be able to cache this statement and it will be able to cache this statement so that when you enter in 8,000 books into this database, it will cache each individual book makes a lot of sense. I hope I hope that makes a lot of sense to you guys. So this was the little tutorial that I wanted to just give out to you guys so that you understand prepared statements. And then in the next tutorial, we're going to implement prepared statements. So we're not going to have much of a review in the next tutorial. We're going to jump right into it. So I just wanted to write these slides so that you understand the reason why this is not optimizing our database and this is optimizing it. Now it's gonna run even faster than it did before. So stay tuned for the next tutorial, and in the next tutorial, we're gonna jump right into the Java, and we're going to write a prepared statement. All right, so I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial, and I hope this made a lot of sense. If you have any questions, comment below, let me know, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.